Okay, so let's get started. So we're gonna be on part two here of our Google training needs assessments for Edmonton Federation Community League staff. For those of you that have not joined before, my name is Trevor Beck. I am a Google for Education certified trainer. I have worked at McEwen University for over 30 years teaching technology, marketing, the whole whack of stuff. So there's a lot of it I've already done. Um, and as I mentioned before, we're gonna go through the session. If you haven't read, looked at part one already, uh, there's links, there'll be a link in the video description for this video to look at the first one. In the first one, we just went through some basic um, tips and stuff. Took a look at Chrome and search engines. So if you didn't uh, look at that, I really stress that out because you're constantly searching for stuff. You're constantly looking stuff up. Knowing how to do that in, in Chrome and the shortcuts and stuff is just a time saver galore. And I also talked about how you can create your own programmable search engine, which is basically your own Google search engine. All right. As I go through, please, if you don't mind, if you could make sure that you uh, have muted yourself. And uh, where's my screen here? Um, I'm just trying to get my screen back. So where's my screen? It's not there. Okay. You guys can still see me, right? I can't see my controls here. So if uh, if I can just get you to mute yourself, that would be awesome. I, and, do I have oh. muting power, Trevor? I, I think Priya, it's just you that's got, unmuted. Okay. But our team's I'm, not really familiar with this platform. Oh, so okay. Sure awesome. thing. Jenny, sorry about that. No problem. Me, Perfect. Thanks, I'm going to try this real quickly because it's been a while. Jenny is in there and Jenny is. So I'm making you a presenter as well, Jenny. So you should be able to mute others. There you go. Perfect. I like that power. <laughs> <laughs> OK, excellent. And uh, yeah, if you go in where it says uh, people at the top there, you can like mute everyone or just right click and mute uh, one person at a time. But we should be good. And I'm, I'm still screen sharing, correct? All right. So yeah. here, here we go. Part part one, part two. I'll pull the chat up just so I can make sure I see that. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go over Gmail. I'm not going to teach you how to suck eggs, as the saying goes. You guys know how to use Gmail, but I'm going to show you stuff that you may, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> not be familiar with. Apologies, as I was telling Jenny earlier, I'm just getting over COVID. So um, <coughs> there's some residue coughing there. So we're going to talk about Gmail. I'm going to show you some really cool stuff that a lot of people um, just aren't familiar with. Uh, we'll also talk a little bit about templates and filters and, and labels and stuff. Uh, we'll look at Google Calendar because we're always working in Google Calendar. Um, also, I don't know if you guys know that, that there is a Zoom plugin for Google Calendar. So you can actually, you don't have to actually go to Zoom, create it, then paste it into the calendar. You can do it all directly from within Google Calendar. So we'll talk about that and maybe creating a public calendar. I'm not sure how often you need to do that. I do want to go through Google Docs. Everyone always says to me, I know how to do Microsoft Word, or I know how to do word processing. And the moment I say, do you know how to do styles and table of contents? And everyone goes, well, no. And those are the basis of everything you guys are doing if you want to save time on any long documents. So <clears throat> that'll be really cool. Also, some other cool features, voice to text, translating. <coughs> oh, boy, this, this, uh, this, this whole talking after COVID thing might be a little more rougher than I thought it was going to be. Um, and then if we have time, we'll look at some sharing. I think I might end up saving that for next week when we talk about Google Drive and stuff. So um, <clears throat> that makes more sense. But let's get started. So let's talk, take a look at Gmail. Right now, I am using a personal Gmail account. So I have Jazz as my training. It, this, all the stuff we're going to see here today <coughs> applies to everything that we're, uh, that that you guys have as well. At the top of this document, and if I didn't paste it in, let me just do that right now real quick. Uh, it is it in there? Oh, there it is. There's a link to the document. So it is an open document. Anyone can come take a look at it. <clears throat> this link here for Gmail training for Google Workspace is the, the official one that Microsoft, or sorry, Microsoft, Google provides. <coughs> I'm going to get over that little point and then I'll be okay. <clears throat> But here's Gmail training. And what's really nice is these guides. If you go into here, these different guides have different scenarios. And when you look through all the stuff, it'll tell you and go into more detail about the different pieces of communication. You'll notice that with Gmail here, they have email <coughs> chat spaces and meet. That's something that they're trying to push now. They want to make sure that um, 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 
you, Gmail is your, your one communication center uh, for everything. But there are different things in here. So how do you handle your manager's email? So if you are, uh, your manager's leaving and you're being responsible for looking at their email, <coughs> you don't need their password. You can get access to it instead. So there's all sorts of cool different things in here, scenarios and that, <coughs> that I really recommend you take a look at because there's lots of stuff to learn there. So let's look at Gmail. So Gmail's kind of changed a little bit. This is the new view that they have here. Off to the left here, you can see we've got mail, chat, spaces, and meet. So these are four different applications, really, that they bring in together. <coughs> Almost got that bug out of there. <coughs> so of course, if I'm looking at mail, that's flat. Chat is exactly like water cooler chats, right? Where we can swap information back and forth, quick, uh, quickly load a link up or send a file or something like that. So we can have different individuals, internal and external, as long as they're using a Google account, can have access to chat. Spaces is a little more advanced. Spaces is more like a team where the team is going to chat, where the team is going to have their files, where the team has tasks. So Jenny and I actually have a team that we work on together. So we have the chat part of it, but we have uploaded files in there that we worked on. We have uploaded tasks and stuff that have been assigned to the team and to Jenny who's on that team. And that's all part of that stuff there. So it you can have as many different spaces as you want and with different people in them and you can add and remove people all, all you want. It's just a nice way of organizing everything in one place without having to go, okay, I'm gonna create a folder and we're gonna pull all our stuff in this folder and blah, blah, blah. This kind of does that for you. Then of course, if you wanna do video calls using Google Meet, you can do it through there. So that's, that's basically where you would get that information. Mm -hmm. The nice thing about all this stuff, <coughs> and we talked about this before, in profiles, I can have different accounts set up and looking at email. So I can have a work email and a personal email. Or if I belong to, a, um, let's say, um, a community league, I might have a community league email. And I can have all three of those available as different profiles in Chrome. But what's really handy is you can do the same thing using Chrome on your, or, or sorry, using the Gmail applications on your phone. So I'm just going to pull this up really quickly on screen share here so you can see it. So just give me a sec to join this team. <clears throat> Where is my meeting? Show up. Calendar. There it is. One second here. There we go. Okay, should you should be able to uh, hang on a second. I'm going to show this, share my screen here. I got an echo in my ear right now, so it's throwing me off. Share screen. So I'm going to be sharing the screen now of my phone. And it should be showing up there now. Yep, there it is. Okay. So here's Gmail. What's kind of nice, if you take the top right hand corner, you can see this icon, right? And when I tap on that icon, I can switch between all these different accounts. So there's Jazz, there's Trevor, there's Trevor's training. So watch what happens here. I just tap on here. I now have all these email from that account. Take a look at the icon in the top right hand corner. It's changed as well. Now, this is a slow way of just going to change. I just click here, tap here, and it switches. But if I, <coughs> excuse me, if I just kind of swipe down on the icon on the top there, See how I'm changing my different accounts. So I can have all these different Google accounts set up here, and then I can check the email and stuff there. Now, the other thing that's cool about this, hang on, I gotta get out of this. Okay, you guys can still hear me, yes? Thank you, I got screen, I can see you, perfect, thank you. And let me go back to sharing, share my screen. So the nice thing about it, as you, as you saw, I could swipe in between each of the, the different accounts. The, the great thing about it is your um, when you've turned on your notifications for Gmail, <coughs> it doesn't matter what account, it's going to be switch, swipping, uh, swipping in. It's going to be switching around and giving you notifications for all those accounts. So regardless of whether it's for the um, personal account, the, the, the nonprofit, the work account, all those accounts I will get notifications from. I'll be able to see that information. I'll be able to quickly switch back and forth 
um, and by tapping the notification, switch into that count. I don't even have to go and do that switch back and forth thing. It does it for me automatically. So I always like to show that off because a lot of people, especially when they're when you're working with your nonprofits that have their own nonprofit email, they all go, oh, I need to make sure that I get this sent to my personal email because otherwise I can't find it and stuff like that. No, just just get it on the mobile device and then everything is there and the notifications pop up and they just have to tap on it and it just puts them into Gmail on that account. So that's a, a really handy thing about uh, about that. Um, we also have off to the side here is the side panel. And so there are different applications that are quickly available. Uh, and you'll see this in more and more of the apps that are showing up with Google as well. But there's my calendar. There's a link to keep. And when I click on this, it just actually just pops up a pane here. <clears throat> and there's my calendar, this information. I can click on there. That'll pop it up in a new window and then I can see it. There's Google Keep. Um, there's my tasks, et cetera, et cetera. And then just to close it off, I'll just close that back there. So those apps are always quickly available. <clears throat> there are additional apps outside of Google that also can get loaded off to the side here. So here we see Zoom for Google Workspace. That's one app. Um, I've got <coughs> a number of other apps that are available to me that get loaded up in there. And we'll talk about that at, at some other point in time. But Gmail becomes now your, your kind of your center of communication but it's not just email. And one of the things that we talked about in the last session, and, and I'll kind of mention again today is, when do I use email? When do I use chat? And you know what? The way I have always looked at it for the last few years is that the chat part is just that. It's for these quick one-offs. Hey, what are you doing? Uh, how much, uh, what time is the meeting? Blah, blah, blah. Stuff that I don't want to clog up my email inbox with. <clears throat> my inbox should be for important stuff, messages that I get from externals. Um, I don't want to see any of that other day-to-day -day kind of quick one-off messages in my email because it just clogs it up. So that's where the chat comes in handy, swapping files and stuff like that. The other thing about the, the chat is that um, for the most part, if I remember correctly, you can't delete the, the messages because they are part of that history of, the, of that uh, chat that we have going on there. So <coughs> do yourself a favor, take a look at what you're doing now with your teams internally and externally and decide, you know, what, what kind of messages are we going to use for mail? What kind of messages are we use for chatting? What messages are we use spaces for, for example? And that'll make your life a lot easier when you start flipping back and forth between all that stuff. Uh, we talked about multiple counts. Oh, and here's another thing. Um, let's look at the reading part here. Okay, I mean, you guys know how to read, blah, blah, blah. In the settings, if you go to see all settings, if you go into the inbox, there's different ways of organizing your information. <clears throat> so usually everyone has the default here. Default is just, just that, just all the messages is shoved in there together. You can <coughs> set it up so that your unread messages are at the top and your read messages follow underneath. You can have anything that you've starred there or you've indicated as a priority gets set up there. You can put those and they get organized differently. So let's take a look here. I'm going to go unread first and then I'm going to go down to the bottom and save here. And when I look at the message, well, guess what? All my messages here are, are well, there's one. So there's everything else. So there's everything that hasn't been read. There's everything that does. If you're someone that goes through and cleans up and reads all your messages and stuff like that, this is a great view. I am not that kind of organized person. That's not the way I work. If it's if it's uh, if it's unread, that means I need to do something with it. So I, you'll see, oh, <coughs> I'll have hundreds of messages and they're all unread. So those views don't always work out for for everyone. So you'll need to go through and kind of decide what you want to do. The other way that's thing that's really nice is. Google identifies messages as it comes in and it actually says, hey, you know what? I know that there's messages that are promotions. I know there are social stuff, there's updates and there's forms. Forms being if you belong to like a, a user group or something like that. And what it will do is actually break those out into different tabs. So instead of that whole long list that we had before, here's messages from people, here's promotions, okay, which we can see is like our spam stuff. Here's our social activity. Well, there's only one Facebook. Here's updates, and that's again from all these different uh, people. And then forms. 
and I can choose to have all of them on or only part of them on. If I decide that I'm looking at something and it's like, well, you know, this Facebook here one, um, for whatever reason, it was identified as an update. I want it to be under social. I just click and drag this over there. And now going forward, anything else that's that matches that criteria will now force it to go into social instead of other wares. Again, uh, it just depends. I kind of like this because, you know, um, I get a bunch of garbage uh, on some of my accounts. Um, the social part I don't really care about and updates is important. So I actually would turn off primary or keep primary, turn off promotions, um, keep all updates on, et cetera, et cetera. So you can <coughs> pick and choose what you want. I'm just going to go back in and uh, put it to where we had before just because it's a little easier. Dee, 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 and save here. Oh, one thing too, under reading pane here, we're going to enable the reading pane. And all this means is right now, when I click on this message here, it opens the full window, right? And then I have to go back to go to the next message or else I hit the arrows here to you know scroll through. I always like to kind of see this message. But off here, once I enable this, I can actually choose a different way of reading it. I can say, I want a vertical split. I want the message to appear to the right. So when I click on it, the message is there. Really easy. And this is the way I like to read things. Some people might like the message at the bottom. It's the horizontal split. So there we go again, the message is at the bottom. If you have a large monitor, and you're more vertical than and horizontal, that's a great way of doing stuff. So you can still go in and decide how you want to view your messages. You don't have to go right into it. You can just, you know, because this is back and forth a lot the way I do it. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's getting warmed up. It's getting there. Okay. Um, so that's the split reading stuff. We talked to mul multiple accounts. And then the last thing I want to talk just briefly about is delegation. So I'm not going to go through all the steps and stuff. Well, what the hell? You know, it's not that hard. So let's say I'm going to leave on holidays for a while and I want um, teaching Trev, this other account, to look after it. Now, these you can only delegate uh, the messages within the same domain. So you can't have a Gmail account being looked at by your work account. It has to be within your work domain, though you can have someone else in that area. This, because this is a Gmail account, I can only have it at another Gmail account look after it. But basically what I do is I'm just going to go into my settings here. Let's see all settings. Um, is it forwarding? You know, it's been a while since I looked, you know, I just looked at the other day and now my brain got lost. And this is what happens when you get sick. Counts, there we are grant access to your account. So see here, th this is just for email. So these two people, right, Trev and Teaching Trev, have access to my email. So there's Jazz's email here. Whoops, go away. There's Jazz's email here. So what this means now is when Teaching Trev, and I'm going to bring him up here. There he is. So here's a new window we can see. Teaching Trev, this is uh, that person's email. Up in the top corner here, if I click on this, I am delegated to see Jazz's account. So when I go into here, I now have access to Jazz's email. I can act as if I am Jazz. I can hit reply uh, and do whatever it is I need to do. So there it is, because this is Jazz's, <laughs> excuse me, Jazz's email. We can see it. It's the same messages. And I can go into here, hit reply, and say, nope. Whatever, nope, not available. <clears throat> um, and then I can uh, just hit forward and then hit send. Okay, so I now have access to that person's email without giving them access to my Google Drive, without giving them, uh, giving them access to my password for my whole account, because that's a security thing that you do not want to do. <clears throat> if you uh, Later on, we'll talk about calendars, but you can also do the same thing. You can share a calendar with someone and they have edit access as well. But this is specifically and strictly for just email. Any questions so far? The excitement is just building, Trevor. Okay. All right. Oh, we got like eight people here. This is awesome. Um, <clears throat> review and add a contact. All right. So this is kind of fun. 
Uh, and this has been relatively new, and you'll find this starting to pop up more and more into other apps, even like, like a, a, a document. So I can review and add a contact. And what that means is if I go to someone's name, let's just use James here. I don't know who James is. I'm going to mouse over James. So there's James's email address. I just have to hit the plus sign, and they get added to my contacts automatically. I can also do things like send them an email. <clears throat> so I can start a video call with them, uh, or I can create an appointment. So if I'm looking at the stuff that comes in, and we talked a bit about before, and, and I'll cover that again in a second, but we've talked before about how you can create a, an, an event from an email. <clears throat> this is doing an event from an email with a person. So notice grow and monetize TikTok. Oh, James, that sounds really interesting. I, I want to learn more about that. I'm going to create an appointment. And so in this case here, it, it doesn't uh, give me a title. I can put in my own title and stuff like that. OK, so we can create those calendar events. However, a better way to do this is when you go into James's piece here and under the three dots here, I'm going to create an event. It's going to take the subject line, put it in there in the subject line of the event. There's James's name is attached to it because he's attached to the email and there's all the information he had in his email message. So we, we talked about this in the last session, but it's, it's always a piece that I like to re, uh, reiterate because it is so easy to do these events from from names, or so for, sorry, from messages. <coughs> a, a, another example, just so you can see, testing group stuff. Here's an email that went from Trevor Beck at Right Trev and was sent to Fred Flintstone, Trevor, and Jazz. I'm going to do the same thing. <clears throat> I'm going to create an event, same subject line. All those same people are now in that event. E -e. And then there's a message in there that I can go in and um, do my uh, put my stuff in there. Oh, this is new. So on the personal side, of course, I'm only limited to one hour with the Google Meet if I decide to include a Google Meet. Uh, snoozing the message, always fun. Um, I want to just hit the snooze button. This is an important message, but I don't want to read it right now. I want to read it tomorrow morning. <laughs> You know that saying, don't put off to tomorrow what you can put off to the day after. So it's the same thing. You hit the snooze button and you can pick a time, uh, a specific date and time. <clears throat> I might not want to address this for a week. So I'm just going to snooze it and do that. So that's always really nice. I imagine in some cases when you guys are working with uh, with your community leagues and you're working with people who's, where English is not their, their first language, you may sometimes get messages that actually come in, in in a different language. If that happens under the three dots here, whoops, where'd it go? Where'd it go? Let me go back up a level. Ah, come on. Don't make a liar of me. It was right there. It was there yesterday. But there is a link here. Maybe I need it to be in a different language. But there's usually what happens under the three dots, you can, there's a link there that says translate message. <clears throat> so it will give you the option to take that message and then you pick English, French, or whatever uh, language you are comfortable with and translate that. Um, add an email to the tasks, same thing. You see this checkbox up here, that's adding it to the tasks. We talked briefly a bit about that last uh, last session, tasks is a very, very simple to-do list. <coughs> and, and it's more intended for just you yourself than as a list of items to add a bunch of people to and, and work together as a group. That's something we do more in spaces. Or I recommend something like Asana, uh, Monday.com, those kind of things that are more flushed out for that. <coughs> but if I want to keep a track of this, I can go in here and I'm going to add this task list and there it shows up in tasks. I can actually have a number of different lists. So I, I pick the list I want and then I can go and add it in there. It'll throw that in. The task also gives me the option to go in and put the date and time in there if I wanted to assign a specific date and time. And what's really nice is, <clears throat> let's say I'm, I'm reading this message here, I pull up my task. If I click on this link here, it'll take me back to the email that the task is based on. So I get all the information about this message. So that's tasks. Uh, we did that. Zoom for Google Workspace. Just so you know, <clears throat> excuse me, here we go again. So just so you know, when you're see working here, no. So when you're creating those those 
calendar events. I'm going to go into here real quickly. Come back, come back. Go away. Uh, I'm going to create an event. So I've created this event. Zoom, Zoom for Google Workplace. Instead of having Google Meet, I can go in here and select Zoom Meeting. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to, uh, I'll need to log in to my Zoom account with whatever I'm using, whether it's my personal or work one. But once I do that once, every time I click on this, it's going to use that Zoom link to, to put the link meeting in there. It probably, if I remember correctly, does not show up when you go to your Zoom pages that say, show me all my, my calendars. <clears throat> um, I don't know uh, for sure if it does that. The last time I looked at it months ago, it didn't. But it's still a Zoom meeting using that Zoom account. It's just the link that gets populated in here. So you can make use of that. And then that way you don't have to do that, that two screen thing where you open up a Zoom account or your Zoom account, go in, create a, a meeting, then come over here and then paste it in here. You can do it all right from within your, your Gmail and your calendar. Is that helpful at all or are you guys already doing that? Jenny, you guys doing that already? The the Zoom thing we are, it was added okay. by our administrator. Okay. But um, I've been writing down lots of other shortcuts that you're showing us here, Trevor. Okay. And stop me if there's something else that you want me to go more detail in. Um, I imagine you guys have a bunch of things that uh, messages that are very consistent and you have an, uh, an automated reply that you would love to put in place and you can do that. So I'm just going to show you one real quickly. If I go into compose here, down at the bottom, there's these three dots here and you can create a template. OK, so I've created this one just to give you an example of what it looks like. Thanks for your feedback. So here's a template that I can grab. I can just paste in the email. The subject line's filled out. The text is already filled out. To create them is really easy. I just go into here. I fill out the details that I want. So I'm going to go into subject line. <clears throat> you might have a case where you put in two. So for example, uh, um, when I needed to communicate with my help desk, I would do that. I would throw in, the, have this message, the two field is probably filled out to help desk. The subject line is the same, blah, blah, blah. I would just maybe have to copy and paste a little bit of details. But other than that, everything else is the same. But I'm going to go into here. My new subject is uh, <clears throat> Ask Trevor. And I don't know why don't you ask Trevor. And then maybe you're going to have some text in here. It's just a, some kind of blurbage that you use all the time. OK, so I've got that all done. <coughs> See, I told you it was getting better. Uh, and I'm going to go to templates and I'm going to save this draft as a template. And I'm going to save it as a new one called Ask Trevor. I can give it a different name, whatever you want. But now. Whenever I see something, so there's this message from James here. OK, I'm going to compose it. I'm uh, rather than, than, than repeat it, there's all it is. I'm just going to put in James's email address in there and off it goes. OK, so what's nice about this is this gets sent off and hang on a sec, where did I go with this? This gets sent off. I, the subject and stuff is filled out. So this is for a brand new message. But if I'm replying to someone, so I'm going to go back into here to monetize. I'm going to reply back to this one. I want to keep the same subject line and stuff, but I want that same message. I do the same thing. I go into here, I find my template, and I'm going to go ask Trevor. So there's the reply. When we take a look at it later, um, I can't show it from here, but what's happening, and this is a reply. The reply, basically, you'll notice it says edit subject. The subject is the original subject regarding grow and monetize TikTok. So you can create all these auto replies that get set up that as these messages come in, bang, you just reply to it it's there, and it saves you so much time. Um, wow. Just a little planning on, on, on your part to you know figure out what messages, if it's something that you all need to have the same consistent message, mm -hmm. you could do that. Um, there are other uh, products out there. I use one called Copy Paste, uh, is it Copy Paste? I think that's what it's called, um, that you could have multi, actually, sorry, Text Expander. Text Expander is a web service. And what's nice about that is like our team could be all together sharing the same, uh, what do you want to call it, clipboard. So if, if we decide this is the name of the message, bang, we all are using the same one rather than you, everyone's having to recreate their own. 
So it just depends. I mean, like if you want to spend some money, great. If you if it's not that big a deal and you're okay saying everyone, you know, once a month or whatever, six months, go and update your messages so the responses are consistent, then, you know, you can just work with the templates built in. Trevor, this has gotten a lot of interest and there's a hand up. Just so you know, Priya, you can jump in. I think Trevor said just to unmute if you have a question. Yeah, please. Yeah, I have a question. I don't see the template uh, option in my email. So is it something um, invisible or something? No, if you go into, comp so have you gone into Compose? Yes, I did. And the three dots down here? Yep. And that's not, that's not that shows templates there? No, I don't have, except templates, I have everything else. I can um, read it for you, the options I have. Well, no, no, um, and it, it may be that that's something that needs to be turned on by your admin, a straighter. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that's the, because I mean, this is a, this is a Gmail account, but this is an open Gmail account. So mm -hmm. whatever's here should be in yours. So that, that might be the only thing is sometimes those okay. features get turned off. So sure. I would talk okay. to your admin about that because you guys should have it. Okay, thanks. Sounds good. Thank you. No worries. Any other questions? Okay. I Perfect. have a question. Sure. Um, how would you recommend sorting your inbox? Like right now I use labels <laughs> yeah. and that works, but just wondering if you had any other tips. Okay, we're going to talk about uh, filters and labels and stuff like that. You can, um, because labels, let me, let, me, let, me, let me move on to the next part and we'll get to that. And hopefully that'll answer it. I have to admit, I am not the best person to ask that because I'm one of these guys that just throws everything there and likes to have it in his face. But you can move things into folders. There are folders available. <laughs> <laughs> based on the labels and stuff. So you can make use of that. There's also the archive, right? These are the email messages that you want to hang on to, but you don't want them in your face. So you're because you've got your inbox, then you've got all messages. And those are two different things. Because <clears throat> because because with it, all messages, you've got inbox and archive. So inbox is stuff I'm working on. Archive is stuff I'm historical, and it's just, but it's out of my face for the moment. But whenever I hit all or do a search, it'll show up there. Okay, let's move on then. Uh, boy, we're going through this uh, a lot slower than I thought. All right, that's fine. So we talked about that. Let's um, let's talk about filters and stuff here real quick. One thing I do want to show you is the out of office or vacation reply. For the longest time, I used to go in and just create a. a, a uh, a filter to reply, but you actually don't need to do that. There's something uh, built into your, <clears throat> under general, if you go down here and you'll have all these different uh, notifications or signatures, and there's your vacation. So if you're gonna be away, turn that on, first day, last day subject, and then just basically whatever you want everyone to know. You can also speci specifically throw it up so that it's only available responding to people in your contacts. So, you know, the external people, junk mail and stuff like that. They'll wait till you get back or until someone else checks your 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 email for you. Filters are very strong and powerful, depending on what you want to do. If I want to look for something by, let's say, let's take a look at the Laura here. So Laura Rogers. So it's from Laura Rogers. I can start typing in information. Uh, I can specify a subject line, whatever. And I'm, this is just going to be a search. So it automatically searches and there's Laura Roberts information. The other way I can do that is actually just by going to her email. So I've opened up an email. I'm going to say, you know what? I want to filter more messages like these from Laura. So it, it actually goes and does the work for me. And I'm going to say search. So there's a search. That's great. And I can use the advanced search here to say, like, maybe I want a subject line that includes the, 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 the clock there or the word video or something like that. So I can fine tune those filters and stuff like that. <clears throat> the uh, the nice thing about this though is I can now save that that search um, as a filter, and so when I go back, I'm just going to click on this and go back to my inbox. Do the same thing. Go back, find Laura. Filter messages like this. I have an option here to create a filter, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So when the criteria here is met, so it's from support at IW. So that means every message, whether it's a, you know, here's some promotional information or whether it's your your bill needs to be settled message, it's it's anything. But now I've got choices of what do I want to happen when when I choose that. 
Do I want this to go right into the archives? Do I want to mark it as red? Is this important that I'm going to star it? And remember, we talked about how you can have your inbox set up so that the star messages get, get pushed to the top right away. You can add a label to it. And so a lot of you are probably already choosing labels and stuff for things. And we'll, we'll talk about this in a second here. Um, actually, sure, let's go. I'm going to add a new label here and we'll just call it Laura. I can also nestle. So if I have, I have, so for example, I have uh, messages or vacations and then my sub labels are, you know, 2022, 2023 and the location I'm going at. So you can have sub labels and stuff. I'm going to create this label. So now when I, whenever it's the filter says, whenever a message comes in, this is what's going to happen. It's going to apply the, the message to Laura. I can forward it. Uh, there's a template that I can use. So remember our templates, so I can respond back with the template if I want to. Um, and again, choose categories, those categories, the primary, social, all that stuff. So there's a lot of stuff we can do here. Now, if I just hit create new, that means every new message that comes in that matches that criteria will have this stuff applied to it. What's always important is this last line. Also apply the filter to the nine conversations that match your filter. So yeah, let's do that. Like, why would I want to go back in time? Let's just get it, get it done. And so when I go into my inbox now, watch what happens. Oh, go back to my inbox, I said. <clears throat> there we go. There's my Laura. You can see all the messages in there. And you know what? I want to, this is important. So I'm going to go into here. I'm going to edit this. Uh, let's do the label color. Let's make it a nice bright red. There we go. Laura stands out. So that's how you would do label. But the problem with that now is we still have all this stuff in the same location. It's still in our inbox. Now, what we can do, notice here, this is a label. I can add different labels. We talked about, because remember, you might have different ways of organizing stuff. You're going to use labels. But I can also move stuff, move to. So this is now a folder, okay? It's a little confusing because basically that Laura label is acting as two things, as a label and as a folder. I'm, I'm going to now move it to the Laura folder. In fact, uh, let's see if I can do it. And I go into here, get all of these, see if it'll let me do it. So all these inboxes ones here, will it let me do it? Now I have to go in. This is one of the pains of uh, trying to bulk something. Um, come on, go move to, there we go. Nope, I got to open it up. So as you go through, you can go in and move these here. Oh, no, it doesn't. You suck. I have to do it from the inbox. Laura, Laura, let's do this one. Move to, there you go. So now I can go through, and, and you know what? If I hold down, um, if I click on one item, and then, whoops, click on one item in the in the key here, and then I hit the, my command key or shift key, depending on what I'm doing. I can select multiple ones. Let's see if it'll let us do Laura from there. Yep, there we are. There's how you get around that one. So now I can go and start moving those files so that they're out of my face. Because that's, for a lot of people, is important, getting it out of your face. It's still here. It's still part of all mail when we go look at our all mail. Hopefully that, that, that answered the question for the person asking to organize. That's really the best way to do it. You can still put stuff in folders and have multiple labels so that you can just click on something and get it to, to show up. Um, I'm not, because just because of time, I'm not going to go into this, but combine multiple Gmail filters into one. So let's say that you've got, um, if I look at this stuff, let's say that uh, Free Busy, Magical, Har uh, Harp, and Benjamin, they're all the same kind of thing. Let's say they're a newsletter. So I want to apply the same label to them. I don't actually have to create five different filters. I can use the or function in the filter and say, if a message comes from Harp Paul or from Benjamin or from Free Busy, that basically takes all those different um, messages in one filter, then it will apply it, whatever you want to it. So that vid, there's a video there that goes through that. And there's, yeah, that's a video and then that's some, some more information. So I would take a look at that. Um, works with Gmail. These are different plugins and, and add-ons that you can use that work with Gmail, okay? So there's all sorts of different other apps that are built in and will work with the, with the Gmail application. And they'll show up off to the side here or something like that. So that's always a good one to look at. 
uh, Jiffy for Gmail. So this is great because now when I when I compose a message here and I want to do something smart, which is what I normally do, I'll go down to Jiffy here and I'll put in uh, hooray. Soon I can spell it correctly. And there we go. Makes things a little more light, a little more fun. So there's lots of other things that you can do. Another add-on that is a, a, a amazing godsend for me is, is Quick Compose for Gmail. So Quick <coughs> Compose for Gmail means I don't have to come back to here to actually um, create an email message. So I'm just going to just do something up here real quickly. Just, uh, well, let's not do CNN. Uh, Mac user. No. Okay. Let's do something light like CBC. All right. So if I want to create a quick email, th this add-on, you, you throw it on there. It gives you an icon here. I'm doing some research here and stuff like that about uh, the Russian attacks here. I don't want to go into here. So what I'm going to do is I just click on this link here and guess what? There's a brand new window opens up. I can go in, put in my type, my two, put in my subject line and then put in whatever text I want, send the message off. It'll close that window and then I'm back to my piece here. So I don't have to go back to the in. Where this uh, add-on is really helpful is when you go and look at the options. And in the subject line, I'm going to say, you know, make the subject line the current titles tab and then include the tabs URL. So watch what happens now. I do this a lot. I'm on this page here. This is really good. I want to send this to, to Jenny, let's say. I click on that same link. It automatically grabs the subject line and puts it in there, puts the, the link to that page in there. So I don't have to do that copy, paste, copy, paste thing. And I can just go in Jenny, and then I can say, you should look at this and send it off. I use this all the time because I'm always sending information to other people. This to me just saves so much time. So I really recommend taking a look at that. If you're forwarding pages off and stuff, that is an amazing piece to have. Okay, we're at 1044. Any questions on email? Because we spent a lot of time there. All right. It's exciting, isn't it? Email. Um, calendars. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I'm in the calendar, the calendar, but when you go into your calendar, so I go to my email here. I'm going to go click on here. I'm going to just, just for the heck of it, I'm going to try something. Yeah, I didn't have tried that. No, well, so I'm going to open this up in a new window. If I'm in an email here, I can easily just go ahead and cr create my appointment, put all my information in there. So I don't have to leave email ever. It's all the information is done right there. Um, you know what? Let me try something. I haven't tried this one lately. Will it let me do it? No, not, not this time. If I go into the calendar and I want to create something, you can click and drag on here. But let's say it's on October or November 3rd. Well, now I've got to move my, my cursor over or change it over here. What I can do instead is just hit the letter Q. Letter Q brings up a quick piece. I put in my title. Um, I can go in and, and change the time really quickly in theory and uh, date and time and add that and then whatever other pieces that I want to do. One thing when you're creating events and stuff, and I can't stress this enough, and we talked about it before, put something in the description. So we're not going to do the email thing where, hey, Jenny, are you available on Thursday? And Jenny goes, no, I'm not available on Thursday. Well, how about Friday? No, I'm not available on Friday. Well, about Friday or Saturday? No, Saturday morning I am, but, and then does that back and forth. I'm going to be able to, because we all have access to each other's calendars, I assume you guys do that as well. You, have, you can do a busy search. Jenny, that's, I'm looking at you. Okay. Jonathan's going, yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So, Sorry, Terry. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, you know, when you put the person's name in there, you can do find a time and get a busy search and stuff. So you're going to do that instead of asking them, are you busy? If, if, it, if it shows that the person's open, then they're open for work. Send them an invite. They can say no. It's an invitation. But in order to say no, make sure the subject line is something useful. Google stuff is not useful. I used to drive me up the wall because, I mean, I cover so much Google stuff. What does that mean? Um, if you want to talk about Google Calendar integration with uh, your, your CMS, great. Put that in there and put something in the description so that I want to talk about A, B, C, D. So both of you have an idea of what's going to be discussed during that time. And both of you come prepared because if someone comes to me and says, you know, Google Calendar, blah, 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 I might need to do a little research in order to come and have answers for you. So if you put that information in the description, 
makes both our lives a lot easier. Can't stress that enough. So a, a decent subject line and details in there. Because though I'm going to use that when that invitation comes for me to go, no, I'm not going to do it at that time because I know we're going to need an hour, not 30 minutes. Or no, I can't do it at that time. Or yes, this is important enough that I will move something around. OK, so those are, are really important things. Just basic, you know, do your calendar kind of stuff. On your, I'm going to switch you to my uh, different account here. Uh, where, let's use Trevor, where's my Trevor work one? OK, so go back here. One of the things that we have available to us now in um, not in the personal Gmail account, but in your work accounts and stuff is something called appointment schedules. Appointment schedule basically means, hey, I will show you the hours that I am available. I work Monday to Friday from nine to whatever. OK, maybe I take Wednesdays off, so I'm going to take Wednesdays off. But there everything else is available. This is going to generate for me a booking page for people to use. So let me go here. There's some other things in there that you can look at, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. But I'm going to go into this, um, choose the location. We're going to be doing Google Meets most of the time and um, in, include any um, docs or info. And hit save. So when this is done, guess what? I now have a booking form that I can give to anybody, right? All your people, anyone. And I'm going to put this, this URL, I'm going to make a shortcut URL or whatever, and I'm going to put this in my signature on an email that says book an appointment with me. It looks at my calendar. So if I've got something in my calendar, it'll take that time out of there. So here it is on the 13th. Let me go into here real quickly on the 13th, October 13th. Let's add something here. I'm just going to take out the 11 o'clock to 12 o'clock, not available. Hit save. Let's just do a quick refresh. Look at that, 11 o'clock to 12, 12 o'clock is, is no longer available. But now anyone external, internal, well, internal, you can use your busy search, but external, anyone can now book a time with you based on your calendar. Okay, that makes sense? Can anyone make use of that? Yeah, can you explain that again, how to take the particular time out from the calendar? OK, so so it basically is just looking at your calendar. So anytime that you've got an event, so I'm going to go into week view here. So so here, this is going to show up um, throughout where my day. But anytime that I'm booking meetings with somebody, it's going to show up here. When I look at this piece here, it's going to take the remove those times from from out of there. So it you don't have to do anything. Okay, it's automatic. Say, okay. Yep, yep, it's automatic. So you might decide that maybe afternoons you're willing to have meetings with um, with the different community leagues. So you so you can set up your your afternoons here, uh, maybe Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are your office hours or your drop in hours um, that you're you're going to commit. So then you would go ahead and do that. One thing to be aware of though, if let's say you're taking Friday the 14th off. I'm going to go into here and I'm going to say uh, day off. And it's all day, right? And I'm going to go ahead and hit save. Now, watch what happens. This is for the 14th. Hit refresh. The 14th is still available. The problem is, and don't ask me why, Microsoft, Yahoo, <coughs> everyone does this. When you take a day off, you have to go and change your availability to busy. Like, it, like I have no idea why it does this. This is the stupidest thing ever. And a lot of people get caught up in this. They'll take their, like, you know, they'll book a whole week off. And then all of a sudden they're getting appointments. It's like, well, what? No, I took the week off. Yeah, you did. But you have to set your, uh, your availability to busy. So now when I take a look at this, there's the 14th quick refresh. There, it all disappeared. So that is the appointment schedules. Um, there are, I don't know if you guys are booking equipments like vehicles or cameras or something like that that you all do. Yeah, okay. So you can work with your administrator and you can get a calendar created for each of those items. So if, I, if there's a video camera that we all wanna have access to, you wouldn't do it, but the administrator does it as what's called a resource and because it's like, or a room even could be set up that way. 
So now you can go in and book that 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 resource and you would just invite them as you would a, a anything else. So let me see if I've got any resources here since I've left McEwen. Uh, seven dash three seven four. Okay, so uh, it's not showing up. But at least I have a classroom. Oh, let's see if the video cameras in there still. Video camera. No. So um. Oh, sorry, I'm in the wrong place. Seven dash. Nope, that's not it. Or video camera. So what would happen is instead of all these people's names would show up, it would be the video camera recorder or or the car or whatever else would show up and you would invite them. And you would do a busy search, right? Because you're not going to invite them because if they're busy, you can't use that camera because someone else has it. But but talk to your administrator about that. That makes a really uh, good good piece for you. When you create your, do your documents here in the calendar, <clears throat> One thing I always say to people, if you're going to do minutes and agendas and stuff like that, let's say you create those, you've got a folder somewhere, you create your agenda, well, link it. Just go into here, attach the link here, or sorry, attachment here. Um, pick it from Google Drive, search for it, so minutes, agenda, whatever you want to call it, and then it's available to you as, a do as part of that cal uh, calendar event. So there's an agenda action item for, this is the generic one, so put that in there. But there it is there. So when I invite everyone to this, they get it gets put in their invitation, there is a link to that agenda. <coughs> so they can go in at any point in time and see what it is. If you don't create it ahead of time, Google provides this here. It says create meeting notes. It's the same thing. I click on it here. Uh, once I save this item, so let me just do the test here. Bam, 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 bam. Okay. Once I save it, there's the notes that it created, and it's created a Google Doc, and there's the notes and stuff, and it's attached to that agenda item for that meeting and stuff. So six of one, half a dozen of the other. This one, you you can't control the layout. The other way, you can control your own layout. So if you do have a layout of how you do things, then you have a template. You can just create those ahead of time and then attach them. But these should always attach the stuff to the calendar invitation. Don't send out an email with separate attachments. And also the other important thing about all of this is stop sending attachments. Because the moment that you send out a PDF or a document or whatever else, now there's 10 copies of that floating around. But if you send a link to the document that's stored in Google Drive, that's one document. Thousand links to it, but one document. So this one is the most up-to-date document. You never have to wonder, did I send out the most recent one? Da, 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 da. No, you want to know what the agenda is, you click on the link, that's that's the latest updated version of that document. Uh, <clears throat> so stay away from attachments, start using the links and, and linking to files stored in Google Drive. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to go questions. Sure, Trevor. please. Well, I'm dying. Um, so something that we do a lot is send out follow up emails with links to resources, <laughs> um, but we each kind of have our own portfolio. So we each have our own drives that are like, you know, governance specific or civic specific. But we've recently created a drive that's that's really for resources that are shared out so that mm -hmm. we know that everything in that drive is like public facing, essentially. Right. Yep. Do you think that's a good way to go about it? Um, we were just finding that that advisors sharing them directly from their drive, then the resources were just really spread out. We didn't know where they were sh shared from. Or do you have any tips on on kind of a consistent approach to sharing, ensuring that the resources that we share with them um, with leagues don't get then changed so that that link is irrelevant in a year? Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. No, no, no. What you're doing is, is, is great. <clears throat> that's that's a great way is because that way, you know, here's all my working files. They're yeah. in my drive. Here exactly. are the public files. They're over there, okay. and and okay. Uh, especially because, you know, you might just, I mean, I as a user might just get a link at the top level of the drive. I can now make my way in t inside the different folders and files because there might be something else I'm interested in, right? Yeah. You never know. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, there's, and and quite frankly, it just makes life easier because you just drag a file in there. You don't have to worry, did I share it or like that? It's just open to to, to everyone, um, and. Are you guys just just out of curiosity? Are you keeping the ownership to the individual? Or that's a good question. <laughs> and are you using I, a shared folder or a shared drive? Yeah, we so we created an entire drive 
That's Good. like yep. a public facing drive. Yep. Yeah, yep. just Perfect. so that all the settings across that drive, we know that everything in that drive is, is a resource that leagues can see. And right. it just sort of took away that nervousness of like, is there actually something in there that's just a working document? Right, exactly. Yeah. No, that 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 sounds perfect. There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. Just as a, a quick aside, though, as a trick. Um, so let's say this is a public site, right? That I'm, I'm in right now. Okay. So these are all public files, which they are. But if I wanted to, I can right click and I can add a shortcut to my personal space. Right. Because the shortcut is just that, it's just an alias, it's a window. It doesn't actually, it just gets me to that other place. So I could have this shortcut, this link here, show up anywhere that I want. So I'm gonna put it under my drive here. So now when I go look into my drive, give me a sec here. Um, come on, there it is. See how it's, see how it's linked there? Come on, well, that's as far as it goes. So there, there it is there. See, that's got the little tail on it. That just means this is not the original. This just points to another file, which lives somewhere else. So if I wanted to, for whatever reason, in my own space, I could do that just so that I have at a glance, here's all the files that I work on, right? The other thing to keep in mind is with your shared drive is do all of you have edit access? Do, do you, some of you have like, are, are you all editors? Are you all owners? Um, I would be careful, like, you know, make everyone an editor. That's fine. Anyone can go in and edit someone else's files. You're all on the same team. What does it matter? There's there's uh, versioning. That, so if someone goes and changes something, you can you can go back and fix it. But you shouldn't give everyone ownership because that means that anyone can go in, reorganize it. Anyone can go in and delete the files. So can you get your job done with just being able to edit, add new files in there? If the answer is yes, that's all you need. So those those are things that I've seen a lot of people when they use shared drives, they make everybody an owner, but then you get people that aren't comfortable with it and they make mistakes. Well, you've defeated the whole purpose of having all these different levels of security on there. Just something to think about. Okay, I have literally one minute left and I want, oh, I didn't get a chance to do the one thing I love doing, which is Google Docs. So um, we're gonna stop at an hour. Or is this, did you want me to keep going? Yeah, we're gonna stop at an hour. Uh, <clears throat> Your brains are blown. Okay, I'll move this over to uh, the next the next section then, and we'll cover that, which is actually pretty good because Google this stuff will go f fairly quickly, but it also tie in with sharing, so we can do that. Any questions on anything we've talked about or that I've talked about today? Okay, I'm gonna stop the recording, and then if anyone wants to stick around and, and chat some more, by all means, you're you're welcome to.